Texas. This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. We end today's show with the shocking case of a Texas woman sentenced to five years in prison for illegally voting, who, who could now not have even more time added to her sentence. Crystal Mason cast a provisional ballot in the 2016 presidential election, despite having a past felony conviction for tax fraud that prevented her from voting. In March, she was convicted of illegal voting, but says she did not know that she was barred from casting a ballot in Texas because of her criminal record. Her supporters argue her conviction was racially biased and point to the case of Terry Lynn Roth, a white woman in Iowa, who was convicted of the same crime after she tried to vote for President Trump twice. Rote was sentenced to two years probation and was fined $750. For more, we go to Fort Worth, Texas, where Crystal Mason joins us along with her attorney, Kim Cole. Uh, Kim uh, uh, Crystal has a court federal court hearing in Fort Worth, Texas, on Thursday. That's tomorrow. If she loses the hearing, she'll be heading to prison. Also with us in Washington, Mark Maurer, executive director of The Sentencing Project, author of Race to Incarcerate and co-editor of Invisible Punishment, The Collateral Consequences of Mass Imprisonment. According to a 2016 report by The Sentencing Project, policies restricting the voting rights of convicted felons disenfranchise more than six million people. We welcome you all to Democracy Now! Crystal, let's begin with you. You go to court tomorrow. Explain what happened on Election Day, what you understood, what you did, and now what you're facing. OK. Um, I went to go vote um, November 2016, and what I understood was that I could vote. So I went to the local church, where I went before I went to prison. And I went to vote. When they looked on the rockster, they realized my name wasn't there. And I was like, well, I've been living here for over 10 years. So when I got ready to walk away, that's when they stopped me and they told me that, hey, you can fill out a provisional ballot. And I said, what was that? They said, if you are at the right location, it'll count. And if you're not, it won't. So I didn't see any harm with that. So the lady sat me down and helped me out with it. And that's exactly what I did. Mm. And then what happened? Um, then I was arrested for illegally voting. Several oh. months later. Yeah, so it was several months later. It was March um, 2017. That's when they um, arrested me for illegally voting. <laughs> and um, I explained that I exactly what the lady kept telling me. She told me, make sure everything matches on my driver's license. So that's what I kept saying was. Um, I put everything correctly, so I didn't illegal, illegally vote. I put everything on the form correctly. Uh, uh, Kim Cole, you're uh, Crystal's uh, attorney. Could you talk about, first of all, uh, how um, how frequently does this happen uh, uh, in uh, in Fort Worth of people being prosecuted for illegal voting and uh, and I'm surprised that in this particular case there wasn't uh, even any uh, any attempt to plea bargain down even if there was a violation to some of a much lesser sentence. Um, this isn't prosecuted very frequently in Tarrant County. I can tell you that. Um, there is, I guess, there's a record of uh, discriminatory prosecution. I, to be politically correct, I guess I will say, but there's a, there's a record of discriminatory prosecution in Tarrant County. But certainly for this particular type of offense, there's not a um, a lot of prosecution that goes on for illegal voting. No, I mean I want to. Um, can we compare this to that story of Terry Lynn Rote? A white woman uh, was convicted of the same crime as Crystal after she tried to vote for President Trump twice. Right. Um, she was sentenced to two years probation and fined $750 in Iowa. Now, Crystal is going to prison Go for five years for mistakenly voting when laws change from state to state? I think it is absolutely ridiculous. There is a—I'm not certain where you're from, but Tarrant County is very proud to be the largest urban red county, um, you know, in the country. 
and um, they want to keep it that way. And this is, this prosecution, in my opinion, is to send a message to minority voters to stay away from the polls. Um, it, there is absolutely no reason Crystal should have been prosecuted. She was not aware that she was not eligible to vote. Texas is one of the states where convicted felons do actually have the right to vote. And so Crystal, um, unaware that her being on supervised release would prohibit her from voting, that she wasn't eligible until, even though she had served her prison sentence, she wasn't eligible until after her supervised release ended. And she was not aware of that. No one told her that. Um, her supervised, supervised release officer testified on the stand that he did not tell Crystal that she was not eligible to vote. And Crystal herself emphatically has proclaimed from day one, she was not aware that she could not vote in the state of Texas. And here, for the crime of illegal voting, it requires that you vote knowing that you're not eligible. And that was not the case here. And uh, Crystal was convicted by a, uh, by a judge and found guilty and sentenced to five years in prison. Like I said, this in my belief, is a concerted effort to keep Tarrant County red. This judge is a uh, is a um, Republican judge. Uh, the state's star witness was a uh, Republican um, election judge. He didn't report Crystal to the police for a crime. He called up his friend, the district attorney, a Republican district attorney, called her up specifically, directly, to prosecute this case. This is a clear message to disenfranchised voters in Tarrant County and to keep minorities from the polls. I'd like to bring in Mark Maurer, the sentencing project as well. Mark, this whole issue of, fel of, of felon disenfranchisement across the, the country, uh, are you seeing at the, at the national level uh, any uh, move to reform the, the, uh, these policies and also uh, this selective prosecution? Are you seeing any of that, uh, as, it, as may be happening here in uh, Fort Worth? Right. Well, we have record numbers of people who can't vote as a result of a felony conviction, six million. But the encouraging news is that over the past two decades, a good number of states have begun to reconsider these laws. In many cases, they've been on the books for 100, even 200 years with very little scrutiny. So several states in recent years have cut back the ban on voting after you complete your sentence. Other states, Maryland, Connecticut, Rhode Island, now permit people on probation and or parole to vote, too. So there's a growing movement to uh, reconsider these policies, to scale back. Nonetheless, because of the rise of mass incarceration, the number of people with felony convictions, we still have this record six million people who can't vote. In terms of prosecutions, uh, we hear stories from around the country. I don't think uh, the numbers are that dramatic, but it's not unusual to hear this. Uh, just recently, a prosecutor in a county, North Carolina, charged 12 people with voting illegally, very similar to the situation in Crystal Mason's case. Uh, in that particular case, of the 12 who were charged, nine of them were African American. I mean, can't people vote in Vermont and Maine, I think it is? Can't you even vote from mm -hmm. prison? You can. Vermont, Maine, for many, many decades, have allowed everyone to vote, including people in prison. And internationally, that's often the norm. If you look at Western Europe, Canada, many other industrialized nations, uh, many of them have no disenfranchisement, essentially saying that there are legitimate punishments for committing a crime, which may involve a period of incarceration, but that doesn't mean that you forfeit your fundamental rights as a citizen. We still 
uh, welcome everyone into our democracy. Uh, it's a mixed up set of opinions. So if, that you, come if you move from one state to another and not realize, I mean, one place you can vote from prison, in another way, mm -hmm. you're in another place, you're imprisoned if you vote, if you're under supervised um, probation in a place like Texas. Is it true, um, Crystal, that they have told you when you go to court tomorrow, you should have your PAGS bags packed, ready to go to prison? You have three children? I do. And they told you you could go to prison tomorrow? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. Your oldest son is just about to go to college? He's in college. Would He's you— He's in college, and um, I go to court on the 30th, and his first game is September the 1st. It's on Friday. So he's been talking about coming home. He's, he's down there on the football scholarship. He's been talking about coming home. I told him no, and I, I don't know if I'm going to make his first game. And you could have this five-year sentence extended to even more time tomorrow? Kim Cole, is that true? That's true. The, the state sentence um, is currently under appeal, so she hasn't begun serving that time. However, in federal court, the judge could uh, sentence her to up to two additional years in, um, in federal prison. For having violated what she was doing under supervision, though she did not know it was wrong, thought it was a citizen's right. duty? Right. That's correct. For having a, um, a new conviction um, for voting. Crystal, do you ever plan to vote again? I, I, I do. I do, and that's what I'm encouraging my kids, to get out there so we can make a difference right now. I do. I, I'm just, I just feel right now that the system failed me. You, you get out, you rehabilitate yourself, you get a good job, you go to school, you graduate from school, you're doing everything right. So why would I go and vote to go back to prison? Why would I do something like that to lose my kids again, to start all over again, you know? Through all of this, I lost I lost a good job through all of this. So it's like I'm going backwards and study forward. Crystal Mason, we Where's have to reform, leave it there. I want to thank you and Kim Cole and Mark Maurer. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Thanks for joining us.